Yo, what's up, Debris? I'm pumped for this interview, man. Let's go. You're the YouTube guy, right? I'm the, I'm the guy from YouTube. Music by Lucas. I got a job. What's up, Team NBL? It's Music by Lucas. And Lauren. And we are here, guys. We finally got to talk to this guy. <laughs> we weren't 100% sure if we were going to be able to make it happen, but, but we, we did. did. We did. This yep. is Debris. What's up, guys? I'm Debris, and you're watching Team NBL and Lauren. Dang! Dang. I want to do like a big shack voice, like boom, it's like boom, it's like boom. <laughs> So today, guys, we are going to be talking to this guy. He's one of the, probably the fastest up and coming DJs Definitely. in the industry. So what we want to talk to him about is how that's, how, how it all happens, how it happens. the like, journey, like the what journey, you guys what advice, learn from that. What advice you have for these other DJs that are kind of trying to follow in your footsteps? Yep. Mm -hmm. No, we, we like start to start every, every interview. interview with an icebreaker question. It's it random. anything. It's random. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. All right. If you could go back in time and ask any famous person in history one question, whom would you question and what would you ask? Wow. I would have liked to meet uh, Kashmir like a couple of years ago. I would have asked him like, all right, bro, let's start a, let's start a, a project. Yeah, let's start a project. there you go. So then I could have had these really cool live shows and this amazing music with him. But Kashmir, if you're watching, because we know you are. Collab with this guy. <laughs> we know you are. <laughs> so, where did you start producing music and like how old were you and everything and why? Right, so I was like about 14 years old and I was playing like piano, African drums. At the time, it was very expensive to buy a reasonably alright microphone. Like, obviously, in the last couple of years it became like cheaper and cheaper. Mm -hmm. So, I was thinking like I need to figure out like how I can recreate what I create like manually playing without using a microphone. So, that's how I stumbled upon Fruity Loops. You know, at first it was just beats and you know, just, oh, this sounds nice. And you know, like, I, I think you've seen that meme where you have like a kick drum, a snare and a clap. And then, yeah, yeah I'm a producer, let's make a Facebook let's go. <laughs> That was me. But uh, then eventually I found out I could actually do more with the program. And I started watching a lot of YouTube. I started to just F around, sorry. Yeah. F around in the program. And you know, then I, I kind of learned how to make music. Who were your biggest like inspirations when it came to that? Because obviously you well, found the, a really cool sound. At the time, at the time it was uh, it was uh, Scream and Banger really from mm -hmm. England, the dubstep pioneers. That was like my biggest influence and then later Skrillex came around, which I really liked. I thought that guy was a machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like absolutely. I was like, wow, well, uh, I want to do something like this. So I started making a lot of dubstep. And then I thought like, I'm getting a bit tired of this kind of music. Mm -hmm. I feel like it kind of blocks my creativity so that's why I switched to house. Alright so a lot of our young producers want to know like what plugins do you use, what's your production process, can you just go into that a little bit? I think every producer will tell you the same, it's like massive, silent one, uh, I use a lot of serum. I use a very stupid plugin actually but that's like a very good tip, it's like a free uh, plugin, you can just download it, only works on PC though, sorry Mac users. But it's like um, uh, a plugin called uh, Subsonic, and it's in an itchy VST pack. Subsonic is like a, a, a sub bass plugin with 21 sub basses, uh, and it's just lush. I it works perfectly. It works well, perfectly. I'm a Mac user, so. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Starting a track, do you start with a template? Do you start with some drums that you've used before, or do you start completely from scratch? No, what I do is I, when I finish a record, I always do that. Is there is a function in FL Studio where you can save uh, project bones. So basically it saves everything from mixer tracks to mixer effects to how you use the effects mm -hmm. to samples to uh, generators, everything. So then if I had a, if I did a track before and I was thinking like, all right, I really like that kick drum. Um, I compressed it pretty well. So then boom, <laughs> I use it in the new track. Yeah. Uh, I, I kind of just scroll through my bones from my recent projects and then just get stuff. And I make like my own sample packs. So whenever I have a, ah, perfect. when I have a couple of sounds I use a lot, then I just chuck them all together in my frequently used folder. And then it's like, boom. How long does it take you to finish a track from start to finish on average, would you say? Right, so a bootleg usually is around 10 hours, I think. Well, no, that's like just a production, like the writing mm -hmm. process is like 10 hours and then like a couple of hours of mixing and then I master it, which is, uh, I would say no more than 20, 20 hours. For an original, it could go up until 60, 70, 80 hours. 
Okay. One track. It, it all depends, really. I'm pretty quick. I work pretty quick. I know what I want to do. Um, as soon as I, I, the thing is, is I only produce when I'm inspired. Do you have any tips? Because a lot of people are always asking us about sound design, and yeah. it's really cool to get different. Like we talked to Mesto about it a little bit. Do you have any tips when it comes to sound design of what you do that helps you get your technique? Trial and error. Yeah. It's honestly, it's honestly just, just playing around. Like mm -hmm. music making. You know, like I'm not. I, I know that a lot of people actually want to make music because oh look how cool it looks to look for a stage and you know on the stage and see all those people just jumping on your music and then they kind of force it because they I want to do that I want to make music and then mm -hmm. I think people forget that music making should be fun you should actually like it to even sometimes play two three four hours with one sample if it you know if that that's fun that's what you should have otherwise music making is I, I think not for you really I've read and I've studied about mixing mm -hmm. so uh, I know a thing or two about it and then I just started to uh, experiment with compressors with certain compressors I started to experiment with certain reverbs uh, start to certain sidechain ways sidechain plugins whatever you just play around um, serious question cats or dogs <laughs> <laughs> easy dogs oh so easy. Sorry, no. Kingsley. We're Kingsley. sorry. Tour in Asia kind of like changed your career. Career a little bit. It did. Or? Yeah. What happened was is I had around like 500 likes, and I started working with my manager, and um, because he had like the faith in the fact that my music could actually work in Asia, because it's like it's pretty rough still. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not like you know very commercial. It's pretty. Yeah. Festival kind of. Mm -hmm. Hard future house or future bounce, I don't Whatever you want to call it. So, what happened was is that he uh, started sending my music to like big Asian DJs, you know, like the number one DJ from Thailand, from Burma, from uh, a couple of from China, even, mm -hmm. you know, the, the whole shebang really. And what happened was boom, the likes came, the DJ started playing my tracks, and before I knew it, like, um, can we book debris for April? Mm -hmm. And then I've been like, I think three or four times to Asia now, and the shows get bigger, the tours get bigger as well. Last tour I did like, I think, what was it? Eight shows or something in two well, weeks. Yeah. But um, in Asia, it's like a big room, big room, big room, big room, 128, 130, uh, even sometimes crazy. 150 tracks and just wow. pop them, yeah, Dang. nuts. That's the difference. And the thing is they, they have so much energy from start to finish every track, like <laughs> <laughs> the crowd, you see that like, it's crazy. So absolutely like the, the Energy is really good. What track do you think started it all and why do you think that kind of Definitely you? game over. I think I was getting sick of, with all due respect, with the same sounds and the mm -hmm. same presets and the same Mesto hi-hat loops being used in <laughs> tracks and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I want to do something original. And the thing is, is that I got a lot of inspiration for that record actually from one of my friends. What hardstyle producers do a lot is they get a lot of um, you know, like um, voices from mm -hmm. uh, films, and then they basically just process them and then chuck them on a track. And I was like, I'm gonna do that. And at the time, I was thinking like, what fits, what would fit. So I just thought like, I'm just taking some saw vocals, like some jigsaw vocals. Like the mixing on that track is super unorthodox. Like I've had, I think, more than four distortion plugins on the bass line. Um, uh, it's not mono at all. I don't know. It's just I that was like a it track where I wanted to sound different. I wanted it to hit hard. I wanted it to be playable for both future house DJs and big room DJs. Mm -hmm. And that happened because a lot of DJs actually played slash still play that track. Yeah, I think that's the one which which did it. From there on, I was like, all right, I want to um, show people that because that track produc production technically is not like a masterpiece right it's super easy i wish i could show you the project file but it's literally like it's not that big huh? no all right so we have a couple of fan questions for you cool the first one is going to be from twitter and it is from medco official he <laughs> wants to know who is your dream collab i think we know from the beginning of the interview you'll know it's Kashmir. honestly it's Kashmir. Yeah. why because that guy is a musician and not a producer he is i don't know i still get goosebumps every time i see him play i i would love to work with him because he is the the best electronic dance music his producer melodies in the are world. out of control i think so yeah at least that's my opinion some of the most catchy melodies i think ever and i would love to call up with garmiani i did a show with him in uh burma a while ago and i had so much fun with that guy like it was such a lovely 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 person and like i've always been inspired by his drums in his track so i really want to like work with someone who 
processes his drums like he does. <laughs> Alright, one more question from EDM Music 55. Do you ever get nervous before you play a live show? Not nervous. Uh, what I do when I do is as soon as I... Um, because like at big festivals, like you kind of stand behind the DJ mm -hmm. who is closing his set and then as soon as my tour manager like plugs in my USB and yeah. uh, makes everything ready for me to start, I um, talk to my grandpa actually. Wow. Because my grandpa is was the first actually from my family to believe in me that I could do it. It's my biggest inspiration still today, and that's what I do it for. So yeah, I, to I talk to him, and it's like uh, it's like it's super stupid. Like it's like uh, grandpa, you better be watching, mate, right? because I'm gonna play my new tune. You know, like like that. Yeah. And then you've got like this little this tension, like oh, I'm about to play for fifteen thousand people, and you're like ooh, ooh. and yeah. then as soon as the first transition from track A to track B goes well, bomb. It's over. Yeah, it's exactly. over, and you just do your thing. Game and over. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> Thank right, you cool. so much to Brie for being here and doing the interview with us. No I really like this interview. I feel like you talked a lot about sound design, talked about touring, you talked about being an up-and-coming DJ, and I think that a lot of people want to know about that, so thanks for filling us in on that info. Yeah. And don't forget, if you love Debris, give this video a thumbs up. Yeah. Give this video a thumbs up. Thank you. Sure. That would be nice. Mm -hmm. And it's all about teamwork. We got new videos every Wednesday and Friday, so if you're not a member of the team yet, be like Debris and hit that subscribe button. Bye, Bye guys. guys! Ciao!